I do want to bring in Nathan Reibner, who was one of the spectators in the audience today at that rally in Pennsylvania. Nathan, forgive me, I know you've been waiting on the phone for a while as we've been getting this new reporting, but if you can just walk us through what you witnessed firsthand. First, I want to I want to wish my condolences on the on the vic, uh, on the victims. It's it is mind shattering to go to a Trump rally and encounter or endure what has happened. Uh, I was seated in the left bleacher section of the rally. I was maybe twenty feet away from one of, from one of the victims. It was. At first, the, the noises we heard, it sounded like a firecracker, you know, the little things you throw at the ground, usually around July 4th. Um, but then once once dozens of people, once I saw the dozens of people around me started, started dropping, you could tell things were very different. I looked at the stage, Secret Service rushed the president. People were terrified. It was, I, I'm... I know it's been about oh, probably close to four hours since the since the shooting, but uh, and Ryan, I'm I, a little I, bit of a loss of words. I can imagine, um, as anybody would be, and we can hear that emotion in your voice, and you know, in real time, as you're you're trying to uh, think through what happened um, hours ago. One of the things that has been very difficult to watch is as we played this video back. President, former President Trump goes down, the Secret Service pounces on him, and the one thing that you do hear in the background is you hear that screaming as members of the crowd recognize that, that someone has been hit. You said you were 20 feet away from what, one of the victims. Um, what did you see uh, happen to that, to that person? I saw that people were trying to encourage them first after everyone dropped in, after, after everyone at least thought that the threat was not immediate. Uh, people started moving away from the person to give them room so that they could be uh, moved out. There was no medic nearby. Uh, you guys had Re you guys had Rico on earlier. Uh, I saw Rico afterwards. He had blood all over his shirt. Uh, I remember I took a photo. That's something I'm I'm never gonna forget. I will never forget that image um, of him of him trying to help um, solve someone who. Who was, who was encountering the unimaginable. What does this say to you? And I, I know that the, these thoughts are raw. This is fresh in your mind. Um, you're probably, you're seeing these images on television and now trying to compare that to, to what you witnessed firsthand with your own eyes. But how would you characterize this, this state in this country right now? I answered an interview um, in late May over the Trump verdict. And right now, things are deteriorating at an even more rapid rate than even most can imagine. I mean, every, the, everything we're going through with this election cycle is historic. I, I understand there have been some very contentious election cycles. Like you look at 1968, you know, I understand that some cycles are very contentious. Um, but this this absolutely is ha that beyond beyond the political impact that's going to have to help Trump. This is this this is a, this is a damaging image to the world. The man who is currently pulled to win the, to win the presidency, who I I wish uh, I wish I wish the best of recovery. Um, out of uh, everyone turned on the news and saw that saw that he had been shot in the head. That's that's a it's a very scary image to send to the world. It's a very scary image to send to people. I was next to someone in the audience that had that was there with her with her young daughter. It's, uh, I was across across the the walking path of the stage in the other bleacher section. There was a young boy who was well dressed up as Trump. I, I can't imagine the young people, the young children that were there watching the rally and seeing that. I can't imagine people watching at home and everyone just not knowing what happened. It's yeah, the children in the crowd, we heard from a local mayor, John David Longo, who was there with his pregnant wife 
and described, um, you know, forcing her to the ground and then having to jump on top of her to shield her from potential incoming gunfire. Um, Nathan, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you sh sharing your thoughts uh, with us tonight. All right, thank you for having me.